This video is part of the Sharing Your Research workshop series for graduate students and early career researchers. Some examples will be targeted toward this group, but overall, this video will provide a general introduction to measuring the impact of your research. To start, let me introduce myself. My name is Chelsea Boley, and I'm the Scholarly Communication Librarian at Texas Woman's University. I'm here as a resource and collaborator for the TWU community. I provide education and training on open access and publishing, copyright consultations, and can help you with finding an open access journal or drafting a data management plan. If you're a student, faculty, or staff member of TWU, please do contact me with any questions regarding academic publishing, open access, copyright, and data management plans. This talk and slides are licensed CC BY, which means you're permitted to reuse and remix this presentation as long as you provide me credit. Perhaps you published an article or recently submitted your thesis or dissertation, which is an exciting achievement. But how do you know anyone is out there reading your research? Are you calling out, hello, is anybody there? It can be hard to know your work is visible and being read. The primary ways that research impact is measured is with metric systems, the impact factor, citations, and the H index. In the last few years, we have seen a growth in another way of measuring impact with all metrics. Let's discuss these three metrics and how you can measure your research impact, who is reading your research, and how you can get insight to how your research is being used. Let's start with the impact factor. Impact factor is a metric at the journal level and is not actually a reflection on the individual article or researcher. The impact factor was originally designed to trace the history of ideas and now is measured based on the frequency with which an average article in a journal has been cited in a particular year. The official impact factor is calculated by Thomson Reuters journal citation reports and often is tied into how researchers perceive the reputation of a journal. However, impact factor cannot reflect the quality of a journal or represent the impact of your individual article. The H index, however, is an author level metric. The H index, also called the H index with a capital H, and the Hirsch index was suggested by Jorge E. Hirsch, a physicist, in 2005. It is an author level metric that attempts to measure productivity and impact of a scholar's publications. The H index is calculated by ordering the number of citations from the largest to lowest value. For example, if we have a researcher with four publications, A, B, C, and D, with five, one, zero, and zero citations respectively. The H index is equal to one, as seen in this example for author P3. The H index is not simply the average citation count you have as a researcher, so a significant paper with double your normal citation count will not influence the H index. As students and early career researchers, I want to introduce you to these concepts of impact factor and H index because they will often be used as reflections for the impact of your work. But now I want to introduce you to all metrics, which is another way to gain insight to how your research is being shared, read, and used. Citations may take years to build up, but all metrics can start providing you insight instantaneously, which is incredibly important for you when being early career and needing to demonstrate impact at a quicker pace than an established researcher. Briefly defined, alternative metrics, or alt metrics, are indicators of impact and engagement with research that extend beyond traditional methods of influence measurement, such as citations. Alt metrics measure and surface attention to research in non-traditional sources, such as news, blogs, policy documents, and social media. Alt metrics are complementary to traditional forms of research evaluation and help provide a more coherent, well-rounded understanding of the way in which research is being received and used in broader society. All metrics aren't an alternative to traditional bibliometrics or peer review, but help tell another part of the story. With alt metrics, you can see the bigger picture of research impact. Journal impact, citation counts, the age index, the number of publications an author has are traditional bibliometrics that research impact is traditionally measured by. Whereas alternative metrics or alt metrics track mentions in news reports, reference in policy documents, mentions in social media, Wikipedia citations, and reference manager readers. Alt metrics can provide you insight to the greater picture of engagement by seeing various engagements in both scholarly and public arenas. There are two primary resources for gathering alt metrics. Alt metric, which is singular and with a capital A, can be found at altmetric.com. In this example, you can see the Almetric donut that shows the flavors of impact, including social media, blogs, news outlets, and reference managers. The other company is Plumex, which captures similar data to the usage, captures, mentions, social media, and citations of a piece of research. The benefits of Almetrics are that they can 
uncover conversations about your research, discover policy references, use your metric scores in grant applications and funding reporting, find potential collaborators who are also sharing work in your field, and you can even embed Elmetric badges on your website or CV. Plumbix and Elmetric are both good products, but presently Elmetric is utilized by more publishers and research services. Let's watch a brief video from Elmetric discussing what Elmetrics are and how they can benefit you as a researcher. In this video, we'll share a beginner's guide to Altmetrics. This is Grace. Grace is a biologist who is about to go up for tenure. In her dossier, she's expected to share evidence of her community outreach efforts, but she doesn't know where to find this evidence. Where can Grace learn how her books, articles, data analysis software, and other research are being used and discussed by many different diverse types of people, including the public and policymakers? Grace asks her mentor, Dr. O'Reilly, for advice. And Dr. O'Reilly introduces Grace to the idea of altmetrics, a new, better way to understand all of the potential impacts of research. Altmetrics are data sourced from discussion happening online around research. Because more people are using the web to communicate with each other in their everyday lives, more research is also being shared, discussed, rated, recommended, reviewed, and read online. That means that the use and discussion of research that was previously hidden is now more discoverable than ever before. Altmetrics can potentially be gathered from any online forum where research is being discussed. That includes social media, research blogs, public policy documents, news articles, and more. The possibilities are endless. These online interactions in the aggregate provide a lot of data that can help researchers like Grace discover the specific, meaningful examples of online engagement. For example, when policymakers have recommended changes to healthcare treatments that were first mentioned in a research article, when a researcher has praised a book on a blog read by thousands of other microbiologists worldwide, or when doctors reference research on Wikipedia to help other clinicians understand a disease. Some experts have called these types of evidence flavors of impact. Based on altmetrics, research has been found to have many flavors of impact beyond the kind you can discover using citations alone. These flavors can include research's impact upon education, policy, and more. Altmetrics can help us fill in the gaps that citations alone can't address. For that reason, they're meant to complement, not replace, citations. Experts agree. Altmetrics are useful in combination with other metrics and expert peer review for helping us understand the potential impacts of research. They're meant to supplement, not supplant, existing forms of research evaluation. Altmetrics can potentially be applied in any situation where you need to understand research's attention, influence, or impact. And for that reason, they're a great fit for grace. Now, Grace knows that Altmetrics can help her find solid evidence for her tenure dossier. You can discover the Altmetric score for any piece of research that has a DOI, a Digital Object Identifier. Major publishers assign these to all articles, but some publishers in smaller journals may not. You can install the bookmarklet easily to your bookmarks toolbar, but visit any paper and get the article level metrics with a single click. Let's run through installing the Altmetric bookmarklet. Go to almetric.it, scroll down to the quick and easy installation, grab the Altmetric it button and drag it to your bookmarks bar, and there you will have the bookmarklet. Now let's take a look at an example of a metric score. This is a publication that is about three months old, and we're going to just hit the Altmetric it button. Here you'll see it has an Altmetric score of 60, it has blogged by two people, tweeted by 75, mentioned in Google posts, and on Reddit. To get more details for the Altmetric score, you can click for more details. And this will provide you a summary, but also the demographics and the score in context. A great tool you can use as a student and early career researcher to show your research impact is Impact Story. Impact Story utilizes Altmetric scores and creates a sort of living CV for your research impact. Impact Story helps researchers tell the full story of their research impact. Go to impactstory.org, 
Creating Impact Story Profile just takes a single click because it is now integrated with ORCID. You can get an ORCID profile at orchid.org. An ORCID is a persistent digital identifier that distinguishes you from every other researcher. Having an ORCID can help others distinguish you from another researcher, particularly if you have a common name, and will allow your publication record to be distinguished if you change your name for any reason. Plus now there's the added benefit of having an impact story profile. Creating an ORCID is easy. Go to For Researchers and click Register for an ORCID ID. Fill out the form with your name, email, and chosen password. Select your email frequency. Show you're not a robot. And register for your ORCID. Once you have registered, you'll receive an email to continue onto your account. I'll briefly show you my ORCID profile so that you can see how it appears from the user side. You'll see the ORCID ID on the left and can fill out your information. You can fill out education, employment, funding, and works. Here you'll see I've added conference posters, my dissertation, and journal articles to my works. I recommend adding all your work since you're an early career and can benefit from showcasing all your research contributions. Adding a work is simple. Go to Add Works and fill in the information about the work, and then click Add to List. Once you've filled in your ORCID profile, you can join Impact Story for free. Go to impactstory.org, click Join, and Impact Story will create your profile within seconds. You'll be able to see an overview of your profile, achievements, activity, and publications. Achievements may include having a global reach, being an open researcher, or information on your work's reading level. Activity will reveal how your work was saved and shared. Under Publications, you'll see a list of your publications that you added to your ORCID profile along with the Ometric score. Publications will be labeled and filtered by genre, which can help you show off your non-publication research contributions. Remember that an item needs a DOI for there to be an Ometric score. By adding your posters and datasets into Figshare, you'll be able to get a DOI. I hope you learned more about measuring research impact and will be able to utilize Ometrics to show your research impact as a student or early career researcher. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact me by email, making a consultation appointment, or even by sending me a tweet. If you haven't already, check out the other workshops in this series, Introduction to Open Access, Copyright and Your Rights, Research Data Management and Sharing, and you can rewatch the basics of Almetrics video from Almetric if you need.